Hi, Steve Wells, JJ Roofing Supplies. I'm at our Roofing Training Academy today with Kevin O'Neill and Kevin Taylor, the two Kevins. They're from Marley, and we're here today to promote the install of a new product that we're stocking called Marley Weatherboard. Kevin, can you just explain what you do for Marley, and then we'll start talking about the product, and then we'll move on to the install. Yeah, I'm Kevin O'Neill. I'm National Sales Manager for Marley Weatherboard. And Kevin, what, do you, what is your role at Marley? Uh, my name's Kevin Taylor, I'm the fairly recently appointed training and technical support manager at Marley. So today, Marley Weatherboard is a, is a new product for JJ Roofing Supplies. You'll be able to see timestamps which will link to the products as we go through the install video. Can you just give us a quick overview of what Marley Weatherboard is and what it does, Kevin? Yeah, so Marley Weatherboard is a fibre cement cladding material, um, similar to traditional timber shiplap cladding, yep. but instead of made from timber, it's made from fibre cement. Um, so some of the benefits of that are that it meets the fire, you know, fire regulations, it's non-combustible, um, and it's also maintenance free, doesn't need painting, doesn't rot. So it's a fit and forget type of product. That's great. And what, what, sort, what sort of situations might you use that product? So it's mainly used on, as an external cladding product. Yeah. Um, so on the outer envelope of a building. Yeah. But you might also use it. People, a lot of people use it when they're building, you know, sheds, man caves, uh, bars. Uh, people use it for dormers yeah. or uh, loft extensions as well. So it's quite. A, That's great. You know, and, and it's got product. a timber effect to the outside. Yeah. So it's got a, it's got quite a pronounced wood grain effect. Yeah. So it does look, you know, so it gives that curb appeal and it does look like natural timber. That's uh, great. How, how many colours do you currently do? And are you going to move on and add new colours as time goes on? Yeah, range? so currently we have four colours. Yeah. So we have slate grey, light grey, white, and we've just launched uh, Marley Weatherboard in black. Yeah. And we do plan on bringing three additional colours in uh, later on. That's year. great. And obviously there's a whole range of trims that the two Kevins will show how they're installed. Yeah. So as you can see behind us, we've actually put together a rig which has got different facets and different details which will enable the two Kevins to show us all the intricate details uh, for an install on this fantastic product. So can you, can you just tell the viewers what we've got up here so far, Kev, on, on, on the rig. Yeah, so what we've done so far is we've felt and battened the area out. Yeah. Uh, and as you can see, we've used, um, we've put a vapor, vapor permeable membrane down. Okay. And we've used 38 by 50 mil timber battens for our standard fixings with wider timbers for the corners and butt joints. And why do we, why do we have to use 38 by 50? Is there is a rule behind that, is there? Yeah, so there's a couple of reasons. The, the first reason is because be, with this cladding product, you need to make sure that there's at least 30 millimeters behind it for ventilation yep. purposes. So by using a 38 mil deep timber, uh, we can we can ensure that. And also it's for pull out force. We can, we've got a strong enough fixing into the structure as well. Okay, and you always have to use a breathable or vapor permeable yeah, membrane. Yeah, we always recommend it, yeah? using a vapor permeable membrane. That's great. Yeah. I noticed some wider timbers that you've got on the sides. Can yeah. you just explain to us why we're using wider timbers there? Yeah, absolutely. So on any corners or any uh, butt joints, we would recommend using a minimum of 75 by 38 mil. Yeah. Um, just so you've got a stronger, you know, a more secure okay. fixing. And always use treated timber, I presume, yeah? Yeah, type A, great, great you know, type A batten, treated batten um, is, is absolutely fine. Okay, do they have to use Marley breather or can they use anybody's breather? Or obviously you would prefer them to use Marley's breather. We would like you to use Marley's yeah, breather, yeah, yeah, but great. Um, you can use any vapor permeable member. You, you, you can see that the timber that we've used is JB Red, yeah. which is obviously part of the Marley group. Um, so that we, uh, we've got it exactly how the manufacturer would like to see it during an install video. We've also got some, some trims and some, uh, some rubber tape yeah. around the window. Kev, what, what, what's, that, what's that for then? So what we've done here, I mean, we've, we've, we've jumped ahead a little bit at the time here, because what we'd probably do first, the very first thing we'd do is we'd normally put our perforated closures on, yeah. which we're gonna do in a second. Yeah. But we've just for this purpose, we've put some of the vertical trims on as well. Yeah. So we've got, um, well, and we'll talk through these as we go through, yeah. but we've got external corners, we've got end profiles, uh, we've got starter trims, but we'll we'll go through that as we do the. And I noticed the that there's there's gaps in part of the. Yeah. Uh, so what we've done when, when when we're setting up the when we're batting in the area out. So we've started off. We always want to leave at least 150 mil from the floor when we start our batten. Okay. And we want to make sure that we leave at least 10 mil at any window sills. Yeah. Window heads, 
and also at soffit level okay. as well. And what's the reason for that? For ventilation. All right, so, yeah. so it's important to have a, a constant flow through of, of Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Of air, yeah. So the first part of the install uh, we want to go to is the perforated closure, which you talked about, which is for ventilation, which is this product, Kev. Yep. Where, where, where is that going to be fitted on the rig then? Can we just tell the viewers where that yeah, would go? Yeah, so the idea of the perforated closure, as we talked about before, we need ventilation. So we've got it, but at the same time, we want to prevent insect, large insects or birds or rodents getting in and, and, and getting behind the product. So. The perforated closure will go anywhere where you've got open batten space. Yeah. So it'll go at the bottom of the installation, it'll go at the top. Yeah. It'll also go around any window sills and window heads as well. So it's like it does two jobs in one, which is to give it a bit of ventilation and keep any insects out, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'll let you two guys That's start nice. putting the first bit of uh, off, yeah. perforated closure onto the install. Okay. So, so one of the questions I was going to ask you, Kevin, obviously I can see the vertical timbers seem to be at a designated distance is there is there a, a rule of thumb on how close together or how wide apart you need to space in vertical battens yeah so what we would normally recommend steve is that the battens are spaced at 600 mil centers and if you're in an area of high wind load resistance you might want to look at going down to something more like 450 but that's something that you maybe should get some technical advice on from, from marley we yeah, we marley, can, yeah. We, you can contact our technical yeah. department so Kevin, I can see that we're getting on nicely with the perforated closure. Can you just remind everybody while we're putting it top and bottom on the window? Yeah, absolutely. So as we said before, we've got to leave a 10 mil ventilation gap yeah. at any window sill or window head. So obviously any you know large insects or birds could still get in there and in behind. Yeah. So in order to close that space off, we use and, and still allow it to breathe, we use the ventilator, the uh, perforated closure. That's great, I'll let you carry on. Well, that's coming along nicely now, Kev. Um, obviously, we've put the um, perforated closure up. Can we just talk about some of the vertical trims that we're using uh, on the different parts of the rigs? Yeah, absolutely. So now that we've got our, our perforated closures in place, the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at all of our vertical profiles. Yeah. So things like end profiles, internal corners, which we can show in a minute. We're going to look at external corners. So we're going to get all of those in place uh, and then we'll move on to yeah. installing the product. I, I the can see some product. EPDM. Uh, yeah. I know that from me uh, from the other roofing products. So yeah, what yeah. are we using EPDM for on this? Okay, so what we do is EPDM tape is used basically to protect the batten. So yeah. um, we'd use that anywhere where there's a vertical profile, but also we'd use it at butt joints. So any yeah. corners, any butt joints. So just, where you're biting the two boards up, yeah? Yeah, so if you're yeah. mid-run, because there's different ways that you can lay this product, yeah. which we'll go through in a little bit more detail later, but anywhere where the product's going to butt together, you're going to get a water channel, so it's just yeah. to prevent water getting in okay. the pattern. Are there different widths of, a, of the EPDM tape as yeah, part of the system? Yeah, there are. So we've got uh, all of our EPDM tape, Marley EPDM tape, is, 20, is a 20 metre roll and they're available in 50 mil, 75 mil and 100 mil widths. And are they self-adhesive as well? They are self-adhesive, Steve, yeah. Easy, yeah. easy job. <laughs> okay, so if we can now move on, yeah. and if we start looking at the different trims yeah. that we're using on the system. Absolutely, yeah. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll start off by installing, putting some EPDM tape on this end here. So we're gonna move on to the ET, EPDM tape um, that Kevin just spoke about and uh, the other Kevin will uh, show us how it's installed. As you can see, it's got a release film on the back, so it sticks uh, without any glues. Yeah. So it's nice and easy, nice and clean. Yeah, absolutely. So as we said, anywhere where you've got a vertical profile, so a corner or an abutment, yeah. or any, anywhere where there's a butt joint with two, two, two adjoining planks, yeah. You would put the strip of EPDM there. And they said they are available, depending on the size of the baton you're using, they're available in different yeah. widths as well. I think we stock all three sizes. That's right, yeah. So uh, at JJ's you can get 50 mil, 75 mil, and 100, 100 mil. mil. Yeah. yeah. That's great, no primers. There we go. No uh, primers needed at no, all? No, not at all. On. And then the next, obviously the trim, the trim's gonna keep it in place once it's yeah. on. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install, we're gonna put the vertical profile on. So this here is an end profile, okay? And where you would normally use this is you'd use it um, 
on uh, an, an abutment, so if you a button up to yep. another material. Uh, here, for demonstration, we're just going to use it on the, the end of this run. Okay. Okay. Is it pre-drilled or do you have to drill it before you fix it? No, it's... Uh, you need to drill it before you fix it. If, as long as you, if you use self-tap screws though, yeah. you can just, um, you should just be able to go straight through it. And again, are you using the same wood screws that you used for the perforated closure, yeah? Yeah, again, so because we're going into a 38 mil deep batten, we're using yeah. a 38 mil wood screw. So I just thought it'd be a really good idea if Kevin talked you through the different types of trims. The first one I am going to pick out though is this trim that you've used around the window. Yeah. Obviously, uh, due to the way we've built the rig, we've not been able to get a, a decent reveal on there. Sure. So what would you normally do when you had a reveal to, to, to weatherboard in? Okay, so if you have a, a window reveal, what we would normally do is we, we would normally use this trim here, which is an external corner asymmetric trim. And the way that would go, just to sort of give you an idea, if you imagine that was our window reveal, that would go on here. Yep. We'd have installed, we'd cut a, a single fibre cement plank yeah, to size, that and that would go in there, and it would be capped off on the window side with a connection profile which would be installed okay, cool. like so. I think that's pretty straightforward. Okay. If we could just explain to the viewers what we're looking at trim-wise. We've yep. all got, we've got some little samples there so we can we can talk this through. If, just talk us through this one first, Kevin. So yeah, so let's say this one, these are all the, these are all the, the, the vertical trims that we use. Yep. Um, so this is a connection profile. Okay. So this is normally used around window reveals. Yep. So again, on, on the window side, of the reveal, yeah. so you'd use it, you know, here, and then obviously you'd you'd install a, a single plank at the top of the reveal, yeah. and uh, on the sides as well. You'd also use it on door reveals too. Okay, uh, this one has got uh, different size legs. Yeah. So uh, that's the asymmetric trim. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. If you could just talk us through so that. So there's two different types of external corner, Steve. There's an, a symmetric one where yeah. you can see the. The as you say, the, the legs are the same, yeah. yeah. And there's an asymmetric one where they're different sizes. Okay. So the asymmetric one would normally be used around window reveals and yeah. door reveals, yeah. as we said. And the symmetric one we would use on an external corner such as this, yeah. where we're going to have lapped weatherboard product on both sides of the corner. Okay, cool. And what about this one? This looks as though it goes on an internal corner. Yeah, right. well spotted. So we've actually used one over here. So this is our internal corner. So again, you use that on any internal sure internal corner. And that just leaves the end profile. End we've profile. Actually, we've covered yep. that as well. We've also we? got starter profile, which we'll see in a minute uh, as part of the install. It obviously goes at the start of the cladding. So we've got all the perforated closures on there, Kevin. Yeah. What's next? So the next thing to do, Steve, is to get our starter profile on. Okay. Uh, once we've got our starter profiles on, then we can actually get our first boards and we can start striking out to get our gauges. One of the things you mentioned off camera was you talked about doing the verticals before you start doing the horizontal yeah. bits. Yeah. Can you just tell us a little bit about what you were talking to me about yeah, so, off camera? Yeah, so I mean, if we actually start installing the starter profile, I can actually show you probably easier. But if, um, Kev, if you can just grab the other end of the starter profile. So by getting our corner trim on first, yeah. what it means is that we can get our starter trim to start at the bottom of the corner. Yeah. Whereas if we'd, you know, if we measured wrong or something and we put yeah. the starter on first, then the corner might end up starting. And, right and obviously that starter trim actually fits inside that, oh, it fits in the reveal of the corner liner, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Off you go, guys. Make okay. the magic happen. So obviously, Steve, one, one of the things that we've just got to make sure of is that we, when we get this on the starter trim, yeah. that we get it spot on level. Because obviously your boards it's are going to follow whatever else. that level is, yeah. Yeah? yeah? So all the vertical and horizontal trims are now in place, including the perforated closures for ventilation, and now the magic happens, and we're now going to start putting on the actual weatherboard plank itself. So the first plank will actually sit on top of the starter trim. Yeah, that's correct. So now yeah. we've got all of the, we've got our 
So we've done our uh, all our vertical profiles, all yep. our corners, we've put our perforated closures on, we've got our starter trim on, we've made sure it's level, yep. and now we're just gonna put the first board on. And as long as, the most important thing is making sure that that starter trim's on level, yep. because if that's not on level, everything else is gonna be out of kilter. Out of so, yeah. okay. so now we should, just, cool. we should just be able to get cracking. So Kev, if you wanna pick up the other end. And is there a fixing in each baton, yeah? So yeah, so they're fixed every 600 mil centre. Yeah. Um, now, <clears throat> we'd normally, so we're, what we're doing here, we've measured this, so we've, the way we've, we've struck it out is with Marley Weatherboard, you can have an overlap or a headlap of anywhere between 30 and 50 mil. Yeah. So what we've actually, we've measured from the top of this board to the top of the, the, the batons. The race, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we've got 1.6 metres. So, yeah. That means we can get 10 extra full courses yeah. at 160 mil, which gives us a 40 mil headlap. And so, so when you work out where the boards are going, do you work it out in your particular structure? Yeah. 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 Okay. So you basically, it just saves you. So when you get to the top, the idea is you don't have to cut a board. Yeah. You know, horizontally. Yeah. Um, you finish on a full board. Cool. Okay. So with all of these, you can just, as you can see from what Kev's doing there, you can actually screw straight through. Okay. No pilot drills though, no? Well, only on the corners, so corners. we recommend in the corners, if yep. you're within 20 mil of the end of a board, yep. just pre-drill it. Okay. And, I'm and just that, gonna... again, is that the same wood screws that you use to fit all the trims, yeah? Yes, yeah, so the same wood screws, yeah. So we'll, all, all, we're, all we're gonna do now, Steve, is we're just gonna make sure, we've got a couple of fixes in just to hold it. We're just making sure it's level. It is, because we've got our starter trim in level. Yeah. So now we can, we can carry on. So, so obviously fibre cement is a fragile product. Yeah. So we've got to make sure that we carry them in the right manner um, because it is quite a rigid uh, and, and thin product. So it needs yeah, to so be carried correctly. What, what, so what, what, in the middle. what we'd always advise is to carry them on the edge yeah. as, as so, just to avoid them snapping or, or bending yeah. too much. So Kev, I can see uh, Kevin is making some marks. Yep. Um, to take the next plank. Yeah. Can you just explain to them what we're trying to achieve by putting yeah, the so what we're making, as, 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 I think What we're trying to do here is make sure that when we finish at the top of the rig, yeah. we're not having to cut any extra, we're not having to cut yeah. any width off the boards. Yeah. Uh, so we want to make try, try and make sure that we finish on, on a full board. Yeah. So what we've done is we've worked out that we need a 40 mil overlap or head yeah. lap to right. achieve that. As the board's 200 mil wide, yeah. We're measuring 160 mil gives you the from the top mil. to give us yeah. our 40 mil. Yeah. And then all we're doing is by, by marking on the timber, we can then make sure that the top of the board yeah. is, you know, is in line with those marks, which gives us our headlap that we need. Yeah. And obviously it covers the screws fixing the board yeah. underneath, doesn't it? Yeah. You, yeah. Could also, you could also, on longer ones, you could, you could just ping a strike line. All oh, right. You, you, yeah. uh, all right, okay, use a chalk line or something yeah. like that. Yeah, use a chalk line. Anything All right, that's, good. That's, a, that's a good tip. Yeah. Now where the uh, weatherboard is coming up right underneath the window, uh, unfortunately because of the way it's worked out, um, but it's standard practice, we now have to cut the board around that window. So yep. can you just explain to us, Kev, what we've done? Yeah. And obviously that's that's left an exposed edge, so obviously we have to do something about that. Yeah, yeah so what we've done is we've just measured what section of the board needs to come out to account for the for the window to come up to to this this perforated closure here just to cover that yeah obviously remember that we always want to leave a 10 mil gap underneath the window sill um, so we've measured that we've cut that out so kev's cut that out with a with a, an electric jigsaw yeah and now what we're going to do and this is really important any time that you make a cut yeah. with a marley weatherboard yeah with it being a cement based product you need to seal that so what we'd normally use is we use marley touch-up paint and so they, we've got, do, they do one in the different colours. Yes, yeah, so they've got one in every yeah. colour. So we've got a slate grey, white, light grey, and black. Gray. So what we're going to do is we're going to seal those edges now with the touch-up paint, just a thin layer of paint. And then all we do is we just make sure that we wipe any off the, off the surface. Yeah. And then we can we can install we one can piece. Fix that. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a, a paint that we've had you know made to yeah. our specification. Yeah, but it's important that if there's a yeah. if there's an exposed cut edge that they they use that type yeah, of Yeah, absolutely. Theory, yeah? So I mean, obviously if you get any scuffs and scrapes, so I mean, obviously yeah. you can see here, it's yeah. been, but that would be okay because it'd be covered, covered by the next board. Yeah. But we would just touch it up with the touch-up paint, but definitely when you get any cut ends, cut edges, 
you need to seal them. Okay. And so you only need a little bit, use it sparingly. And the reason for that is with it being a cement based product, if you don't, it just, well, it just prevents, helps prevent things such as efflorescence. And it must look better as well because you can, for some reason, even though you've got something hidden, you can always see a cut edge, can't yeah. you? Wherever it goes, you can see a cut edge. So that, that's yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's really good. We've used the uh, touch-up paint for the exposed areas. We, we're obviously going to use some colour-coded screws yep. so they blend in. And obviously, I, I would imagine it's probably a good idea that we mark yep. where your battens are before you start cladding over the top yeah. of it, which we've done. So it's uh, so that's really good. So yeah, so as you can see, all the fixings, these fixings here are normally hidden. Yeah. But anything on the top, or yep. underneath a windowsill, anything where it's going to be on show. What yep. we do is we have we have um, Marley has um, colour matched weatherboard screws yep. for for every colour. Yeah. So we're going to put the slate grey's one. On. We've marked on here uh, where our battens are. Yeah. So we can just go ahead and put these on. So obviously we've done um, a feature. Uh, one of the sides using white, which I think you'll have to agree looks really good. But you can also see we've got the contrast of the two other colours uh, that are available right now, which is light grey and slate grey. Right. Um, each, each plank comes with its own colour topped screw for any visibility, if you can see a screw where it's fixed above the line. Um, and one thing to note is it's got, what do they call that, a Torx? Yes, it's a T20. A T20 yeah. fixing, so it's a star type fixing, yeah. um, not an ordinary Phillips fixing. And I think when we get black as well, black's been released today. Yeah, so black's out now, um, and uh, yeah, so that'll be, that's available now. Yeah, as well, uh, so. I've got to say the white looks really good. Like that? Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it looks good. Um, but you can see the contrast between the other colours. Um, and it depends on what you're doing. Just do a bit of contrast work with the, with the colours just to see how it fits into your property. This is great, Kev. We've now got to the final board. Can you talk us through what you're gonna do where it goes around the top part of the window? Yeah, so obviously what we've done is, we, as we discussed there, we've installed the uh, perforated closures. Yeah. We've left a 10 mil gap there for ventilation purposes. And all we're gonna do now is we're gonna put a starter trim across here. Yeah. And then the last board will just sit in place um, and we've, you can see where we've marked to yeah. get our starter trim in the right place. The top board then will go in and we just finish it off with some colour match screws. Fantastic. Got the final plank up. Um, I'd like to thank both Kevins for coming and doing a fantastic job. Um, it looks really good. Is there anything that we need to know about aftercare or any maintenance and stuff like that? No, so I think one of the best things about this product, Steve, is it's maintenance free. Yeah. It's, you know, as I said before, it's a fit and forget product. Yeah. Um, all really that's left to do now. Sometimes when you're handling the product through, you know, handling installation, you might get some scuffs. So just touch those up with a bit of touch up paint. Just give it a wipe clean, any dust, uh, and that's it then. You don't fit and forget. Fit and forget. That's fantastic. So all four colours are in stock at JJ Room Supplies, including all the accessories. Um, you can contact us online at jjroomsupplies.co.uk or you can shop in one of our eight branches. Um, as I say, it's all available, all four colours. Black is coming very soon. Uh, so the, the slate grey, the light grey and the white are currently all available from us. Black will be on the shelf soon. So I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to watch this fantastic video. It's been a bit of a long haul. Um, it's a first for me and I've seen just how easy it is to install this product. So I'd like to thank the guys from Marley um, and we look forward to a fantastic relationship with Marley Weatherboard. Thanks very much guys, because if it's on the roof, we stock it. <laughs>